And so I remember we get there, and all these, there's about probably seven reporters there. <laughs> it was not very big. And very first thing that um, Horian does, he starts taking away stuff. He takes away uh, one of the guys' kick pads and uh, tells another guy he can wear one boxing glove and starts I'm taking, sure yeah. takes my shoes away. And I was like, of course, me not knowing and being smart. Uh, saying, no, no, this is Noel's bar, right? I said, okay, no problem. I'm still going to beat all these guys. It just didn't look like there was anybody there that could handle me. It was my own ego, my own cockiness. And I should have fought for it because it would have turned out much differently. Um, but I just felt like, oh, never, baby, I'll kill these guys. And Hoist is walking around yeah, in his pajamas. Yeah, 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 he's, yeah. He's squashy. So, so Hoist so, is walking around in his pajamas? Pajamas, right? Okay. I'm like, I'm going to kill this guy, right? And then lots of these guys look like they just got off the bar stool. Kevin Rozier is probably 100 pounds overweight. I mean, And then there was some of them like Zane Frazier who looked like they could fight, like Patrick Smith. And, you know, some Gerdeau of those guys too. who looked like they could fight. Gerdo is a bad And I knew Gerdo, right? Jesus. I knew he was a badass. And I said, okay, he's the one I have to worry about, Gerdo. Yeah. And so I thought to myself, man, I'm going to win this thing, man. If Gerdo is the only one I got to I gotta watch out for, I'm, I'm, I'm going to win this thing. And I thought to myself as I was going into this, I'm going to win. And then all of a sudden, they start taking uh, Zane Frazier's kick pads away. And, and they let R. Jamerson wear one glove. And they said, I couldn't wear my shoes. It's like 24 hours before we were going to fight. And, of course, you know, whatever. I I'm still going to win. This can't be that big of a deal. I mean, I've never been in a ring without a shoe on, right? I mean, I've always had a wrestling shoe on. This is your comfort, right? Yeah, it's yeah. like it's my, it's my, it's everything. It's my base. But I didn't realize how much it would affect me until I actually got in there without shoes on. And I remember the very first fight happens, and this is where when we talked up earlier about no holes barred, anything goes. I thought that's what we were doing in Japan, pretty close, right? And that maybe we just bare knuckle, but it can't be much different. But when Gerardo hit that sumo, boom! He punches him. He goes to the ground. He kicks him in the face. Was that Tula? Yeah, Tula, Taylor Tula. Yeah. Taylor Tula. Oh my God! He Big football boy. kicks him in the face. Yeah, he gets his teeth implanted in his foot. Right then and there, you're like, "That's no hold bars." <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what, that's what we don't understand here. We didn't realize it looked like this. <laughs> and I thought it's a street fight. And they were so backwards. They were like, "Well, do we take the teeth out of the foot?" No, let's just wrap right. it up, leave the teeth in, and then we'll take care of it afterward. I mean, meanwhile, he almost lost his foot because of it. Right, it was... It was, it was, was there even a doctor there? No, there was, but it was... Like a chiropractor? <laughs> what are we talking about? Right. <laughs> it was a nurse. <laughs> you just got an EMT. I found him on the way over to the event. <laughs> it was, He's it great. Was, it was weird because there, nobody really... I, I, personally, I just think people were just in shock at what was happening. I can't even believe they allowed that. Well, I mean, you think about the headbutts. How much resistance did they have? Like, did you guys notice, like, even in a locker room prior, like, this might not go? No, man. I mean, yeah, everybody was like, yeah, it's happening, but no one knew what it looked like. I mean, how many people really understand what they're going to go into when you got guys that are professional fighters, right? And all of a sudden, you see a football kick. Like a guy in the street kicks somebody in the head when he's down. Uh, head butts and people punching and biting and pulling hair. And you're like, that's not quite no holes board that we expected, right? We were thinking more like the fighting and the wrestling and things people are used to seeing in a professional manner. Okay, that's a brawling style. What you experienced was a skill set in Japan. Yes. Like, like they were trying to figure out what they were doing. Meanwhile, Japan already had the nuances already. They were, they were much more advanced over there. Absolutely. And, but, but the key, what I'm trying to say is, is that we were all expecting this no holds barred thing, and we were expecting it to look a certain way. But the reality is that it when it different. actually played out, it was completely different than what anybody expected. I remember a couple of guys in there going, I didn't sign up for this. I was like, no, brother, you did. We just didn't expect it to look like this. Right. You know? Right. And I was, I was excited because, I mean, the way I grew up was like, you know, you either got shot, stabbed, or jumped. Right? That's what you had to worry about. But if you were fighting somebody one-on-one, face-to-face, -on -one, -face, that was a good day. And so when I saw this, I was like, oh, man, this is right up my alley, man. This is going to be awesome. And I remember going against Patrick Smith, and I smashed him. 
And then I went up against Hoyt. He was pissed. He was. He pissed. was really pissed. He but, wanted to fight again. Yeah. But here's the thing: when I this is where I realized that I screwed myself because if you watch that, when I went to shoot in on a pat, I shot in and my I couldn't take him down. I had to spin him around enough times to trip him and bring him down because my feet were slipping. I was gonna I ask couldn't that. Shoot, right? So oh, I ended up getting him get down. I heel hooked yeah. him. I couldn't. I couldn't. And then when I went back to the locker room, I'm like, okay. Uh, it's slick out there. You should tape the bottom of your foot, maybe. No, because it's still, when the dirt gets on that tape, it's even more slipperier. So putting a tape on there would make it worse. So I just, you know, I just said, oh, I'll just I'll go in and I'll shoot on a hoist. I'll get him down and, and I'll work from the ground. You should have just went with shoes regardless. You oh, should... I should have fought it because it was supposed you, to be no hoist. You should have just far. walked in with shoes. Just, what are you talking about? Huh? Yeah, we'll, we'll discuss it in the ring right, right. before, you know. <laughs> but they said we couldn't wear them. I mean, they literally said you can't wear them. And it's like. Were you wearing a mouthpiece during this or no? Yeah. Well, okay. I, and that was different though. A lot of my other guys did. I was already for fighting over in Japan. So I. But well, I the regular, to wear what like, I did they wear. tell you, hey, you can wear a mouthpiece, no. you can't wear a mouthpiece? No. So, they didn't so even recommend yeah, a mouthpiece. Yeah, we don't recommend nothing, it. Nothing. We you don't recommend a mouthpiece, but do not wear shoes. Right. Like, how ridiculous is that? Well, if you know, the next time I fought a horse, I wore my shoes. Yeah. I beat the hell out of them. Yeah. You know? Uh, yeah. So it just, yeah, so it was a lot of politics involved. It was slanted. It was yeah. just like Japan when you were it's, not yeah. one of the chosen exactly. guys. It's the same thing. Yes. It's the fight game. Yes. That's the fight 